Great. Welcome everyone to the Identity Implementers Working Group call for May 19th, 2022. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Char Howland and I'm a co-moderator of this group with Heather Dahl. Today we will switch up the order, uh, the usual order to accommodate schedules and we'll start with the presentation in the first half of the call and then move into the working group updates in the second half of the call. So we'll hear a presentation from Adrian Sanglier, Yuri Feliciano and Heather Dahl on the Cardia project, verifiable credentials for health information go open source. And as usual, <clears throat> since this is a Hyperledger call, we are following the antitrust policy and the Hyperledger code of conduct. We are collaborators in this space and anything confidential or, or proprietary is not discussed on this call. As usual, if you have an interesting project able to be shared publicly that you'd like to talk about on this call, you're very encouraged to do so. Just reach out to me and we will uh, schedule you in for a, a presentation on a future call. This call is being recorded and will be posted on the meeting page later today. Um, with that, we can move on to introductions. Would anybody like to introduce yourself if you are new or rejoining or just would like to say hi and a few words about what you're involved in in this space? Uh, for Adrian and Yuri, I'll introduce you before the presentation, but you're welcome to say hello now as well. Yes, hi, good, good morning here in Aruba. Uh, my name is Yuri Feliciano. I'm an innovation advisor with the Minister of Tourism and Health. And uh, yeah, we've been working with Heather and, and Adrian on this project for about almost two years now. And so it's very exciting that now we are um, able to voice all, all, all this nice work that we've done. Um, thank you. Great. We're glad to have you on the call. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll go ahead. <clears throat> uh, so my name is uh, Adrien Sanglier. I'm working for, for CITA. So CITA is uh, the IT provider of the industry, uh, connecting airline, airport, and, and governments uh, in many steps of the, the travel continuum. Uh, we are in, engaged in um, since uh, well some, some years ago on um, on researching digital identity and especially uh, how can open source uh, help us to uh, to streamline those conversations between those three major stakeholders in the, in the industry for the good of uh, of everybody, all travelers mainly. Um, and uh, I'm working at the CETA lab, so um, that's the research arm of CETA, and I'm leading the, the blockchain and digital identity uh, research program. And I'm uh, very, very happy to be uh, talking about our, our joint effort today. Great, thank you so much for joining us. All right, and I have sent out the uh, wiki link um, for this meeting, so if you're Willing to just put down your name um, to show that you attended today, that would be great. Um, so now we are, in, instead of jumping into working group updates, we're going to turn it over to Heather, Adrian, and Yuri um, to hear about the Cardia project. Um, so I will pass it over to you three. Great, and I'll, I'll share the slide deck with everyone here. Um, we are so happy to be here talking with you today, Adrian, Yuri, and I. This follows on a presentation that we did last week, which was the first time the three of us talked jointly in a presentation session. Actually, we were uh, physically in the same location too, which was a milestone because as um, Yuri said, this marks two year anniversary for us uh, working on this project, which makes it especially exciting, but the other thing that we want to flag is that we had the honor um, of being there with Adrian and Sita um, when they won the Kupinger Cole European Identity and Cloud Conference Verifiable Credential Award that was given that night the same evening that we gave our presentation. And so it's an honor to be here with both of them to present about the work that we have been working focused on for so long. So I think, you know, a good place to start, Adrian, like they say, is what is the problem that you're solving? From CETA's perspective, two years ago, what was the problem that you were looking to solve? 
Right, it's hard to believe it's been uh, two years already, <laughs> but uh, you're right, it's important to mark the, the milestone. And I think that uh, the best way ever we could uh, have it was last week. Uh, it was a good uh, emotional moment <laughs> at the ERIC. Um, so uh, really, uh, the, the problem we're looking at solving is, um, well, international travel. Now, I think it has been more complicated than, than ever uh, with those changing requirements. Uh, lots of paper documents now are required to, to travel long haul. And uh, when you think you usually go at the airport with a bunch of printed documents, you're not exactly sure which one going to be required, inspected, needed. Even the airline agents sometimes do not really know uh, what's the current state of the, of the regulation for, for that specific destination. Uh, so I would say in a nutshell, we, we need pre-clearance. That means we need to, um, to have a confirmation that uh, on a digital way, uh, when I go, before going to the airport, I have met all the requirements to fly to this country. But governments, to, in order to provide the determination, would also need um, some, some assurance about the data. So we need access to verifiable information so that preclearance can be given to the passenger. And as a passenger, then I feel good because I know I would be, I would be cleared to fly uh, to, to these destinations. So that, that's really the main, uh, the main problem we're looking at, uh, at solving. And then Yuri, from your, where you sat two years ago today, it's really hard to believe that Aruba was closed, um, but that was your reality. What was the problem that you were looking to solve with this collaboration? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's incredible. It's been two years, um, but, but like, I, like uh, uh, to, to be clear, Aruba is, um, not more than 90% dependent on tourism. So closing the border was uh, a, a, a pretty big deal for us. And uh, exactly like Adrian saying, you, you, as the government would implement the rules, you would have to actually make sure that they are viable for, for the traveler. Um, and uh, this, this word that Adrian used also, the pre-clearance was very important. You have all these paper documents, yet, yet you don't know the, the legitimacy of, of any of them. Um, you're just going by, by, um, by, by your eyes most of the time. And this was a big issue for us. And it was a big issue as we are opening back the border. So having this verifiable um, uh, um, credential or verifiable data um, and uh, directly connected so that you are in a way, what we accomplished with this pilot was that you are held pre-cleared to come to the country. And this was important for us because especially as tourism is our big deal, is our um, uh, main uh, bread and butter, uh, the, the tourist, even though you would, even we had the upload of a, a document, it still takes time. It's not um, immediate. It's not pre-cleared, as agents said. And we we saw also cancellations between these times. So this was a, 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 a big problem. And it's a huge benefit for the traveler, for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch screens because I want to show where we were at one year ago. And this is the Happy Traveler card. As you can see, everyone here, it's on YouTube. You can watch it as well in your free time. But what this marked was our first deployment of this system in the wild with, with restaurants, casinos, um, arrival, the clinics at the, the clinic at the airport, clinics. And um, we needed a way to communicate this. And so what this video does is it outlines what we did in our first year. So I'm gonna play it.
go over to you first is we did that implementation a year ago. At that time, what did that work mean for CETA and innovation in the commercial aviation industry? And what happened since then? Right. So I think what we, we demonstrated with this project is really that decentralized identity works to exchange health data. And I think that was a major milestone. Uh, it works because, well, it's simple. Um, it, you do not need to establish point-to-point -point connections um, with all the verifiers and all the issuers. Uh, it is secure, of course, because it's based on everything that has been done in the last uh, maybe decade or two decades on, on the open source community uh, using all the cryptographic standards that, that, that we know on URSA and, and all. And, and finally, it is preserving uh, privacy about individuals, about uh, issuers, um, because, well, it follows, of course, the, the, the principle of self-sovereign identity, uh, and is well, based on decentralized identity. So then what we've done is, well, we have we've taken this trust platform that was this proven and we enriched it with uh, health data that, that is coming from uh, health providers from other jurisdictions. So that as a traveler, I can claim this uh, health data. I can store it on my wallet and control it on my wallet or in the form of a mobile application, and then exchange it with a, a, the ETA system that Aruba government already had. So ETA, Electronic Travel Authorization. Therefore, the Aruba government, as it is verifiable information that is digital, can take well uh, an informed decision about, about this data, which is uh, we've, we've seen exchanged privately. Um, and can then issue something back to the individual. So that the main change in, in the process is, as a traveler, I'm, I'm flying to this country, I've submitted this information, exchanging data directly with this web app, and I get something back instead of a, in, in form of, a, of a, another verifiable credential, and I have a, a receipt that, yes, I've been authorized to travel, uh, to Aruba, so that well, I, I feel happy now when I travel and I go to the to the airport because I've passed successfully all the uh, the, the health health checks. And Yuri, that was great. You know, Adrian talked about as a traveler, I'm happy, and that that is the theme of Aruba is happy. When you saw the system go into play a year ago, how does something like decentralized identity not only address the problem that you were solving, but then beyond that? Um, well, yeah, well, uh, I have to say we had uh, different solutions. So you have something like this that is completely decentralized, and we were also um, other we were running other pilots with um, semi-centralized and completely centralized <laughs> um, other ones. So you see this great benefit in giving the the traveler um, more power. Um, in, in many sense, we are, um, as the island, we want to protect the traveler. And that's what verifiable data um, gets us as to not only the, the individual, but the ones that he will be in contact with. So um, the part of uh, decentralization, uh, I, I have to be honest, in the beginning, um, it was uh, uh, very hard to explain. So when I see this video, I'm always happy to see this video because it, it was something so nice that we can um, express uh, what we, we were talking about. But yeah, so for, for, for the island, it was very important to, to have a solution like this that you can say that you give back the power to the traveler. And I think that's what was um, very well accomplished. And when we first started talking, what really stood out in my mind was the commitment of Aruba to a traveler's privacy. That was, you, you led with that, you were committed to that, and allowing the traveler to have control over their data. You were also committed to open source and interested in exploring that as well. Can you talk to us a bit more about the role of open source in your innovation? Yeah, I uh, uh, for us, uh, especially as a small island, um, we've had a lot of uh, uh, um, um, yeah, issues with different vendors, software vendors. So um, especially being uh, um, in the government, you have this, this, this uh, um, uh, always have connection with a specific vendor. So I think open source for us, especially in, in that part, 
um, we, we, I saw it um, as the government also saw it as uh, being more of open, um, as the as the word says open, but not to have this vendor locking was important. And I think one thing is also about open source is the community that you have uh, more than just CETA or, or Indicio. Um, you have a, a community behind it that can work and have a uh, um, um, very well outcome on, on the situation and communication towards a government agent or um, a small island in our case. And, and absolutely with, with CETA, it was very important also from day one Adrian, um, that this was developed. And I think that's also why we're committed in doing sessions like we are today with the Implementers Working Group is we started with open source, we continued with open source. And then I think what was interesting was a year ago when we were in the midst of it all in the thick of it all on the, on the implementation, the opportunity with Linux Foundation Public Health showed up. Do you wanna talk more about that? Sure. So I think um, adoption really is the key challenge uh, of decentralized identity because, well, the model is new uh, and, and, well, you get the value when you have a critical mass. Um, and in order to get adoption, you need trust, of course. Um, and we've seen that, well, transparency and neutrality is, is, is what we need to guarantee that, that adoption. So the use of open source was then obvious to us and and, um, and CETA was was already quite familiar with um, open source communities and and the use of of, of those those models um, well in a sense CETA also represents a very diverse industry we as i said we represent airline airport and and government so we we need to have all those people communicating to each other so as i said neutrality uh, comes also with open source, so that's why um, that was uh, that was really our, our, our focus. And as if all of what we've done was built on top of open source, it was natural to us that we would give something back, uh, if I can say so. Um, and that's why we we donated the code we developed uh, in partnership with uh, the government of Aruba with, with Indicio uh, to the open source community. And uh, we created Cardia. So that's how really a uh, hold of this uh, uh, came to, uh, to, to buff. Um, and, um, and it's all today a very active community. We, we, we meet every, every Thursday and it's, uh, it's very uh, heartwarming <laughs> uh, to see that community growing day after day and uh, week after week. And it's now, you know, we see more and more um, companies, organizations, um, uh, issuers really joining this group. Um, and, and, and we, uh, with partnership with, of course, you at, at Indis, we organize also those interop asun that are uh, also uh, very, very successful. So uh, very, uh, very proud and happy about the, the, the path <laughs> that we've, uh, we've all taken on that side. Well, I, I think um, what was interesting, I, I think, or maybe the most emotional part about winning the award last week was you see those images where they talk about progress and it's just that straight line up and to the left but in reality it's anything but and ours was a story of the loop de loos back and forth of what reality is and um you know it took determination and drive at times heroic efforts by all of our teams and so with that award i think it was the first time we had that moment to say oh my gosh we just went through not only a pandemic together, but we went and pushed ourselves to accomplish a technology that was emerging and make it an absolute reality um, with people who are not engineers, but who are actually traveling. And with that, I think I learned more about verifiable credentials in the two years of working with both of your teams than I did the entire 10 years prior. And so I think it's really important to hear from both of you the lessons that you learned along the way. And so maybe we'll start with you, Adrian, and then we'll go to you, Yuri. Sure. So I think yeah, you know, I'm with you. We we, we learned a lot, um, and I, a few lessons learned that we, we can summarize today is first on the data, 
itself um, as we put there, you know, just enough is perfect. So um, I would recommend for anybody willing to, to, to go and implement a, a solution based on this decentralized identity, uh, make sure you, you do your due diligence on data. Um, of course, an immigration agency will need all the data to clear a border because there is a policy in place, all the information um, contained in, a, for example, a digital travel credential, we need to be to be disclosed. But that's not the case for, for example, an airline. An airline just needs to know you have a valid boarding pass and it matches your identity. Uh, but even that can create a problem for an airline to get access to, uh, to more information than this. Um, so um, that's the beauty of verifiable credential that we should reuse. It's all about selective disclosure and be able to answer question based on uh, a credential. So uh, make sure you, 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 you take all the benefit from, from, from this. It can really make your life uh, simpler. Uh, also, um, in terms of interoperability, um, we, you cannot have world domination plans today. Um, there's a lot of solutions that exist, the, the data ownership. So make sure your, your solution works with everything that's, that's out there. So focus on standards, uh, focus on, um, on, 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 on being open, uh, I would say, in, in this solution. And you and, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, just a, a third thing, which is, was also an interesting learning, is um, there's never a magic in decentralized identity. <laughs> um, because the value, it's all in, in, in automation. So you, you can reach a level where it's automated, uh, when the integration has been performed. So um, it's still an IT project, as, as, we, as we know it, and with all the security assessment and connect the API and do your architecture, your design review, and, uh, and, and plan enough time for, for that. So um, yeah, that was my, my further, let's say, and, and last advice. Uh, Absolutely. Say. It's not magic. And um, we witnessed every gritty detail along that way, especially I know you're you and, and your team as well. So do you want to wrap it up on, on lessons learned for us and bring us to a close, Yuri? Um, yeah, sure. I think one of the things I learned was trust Heather. Uh, because uh, that was a very uh, good lesson here. Uh, but but yeah, exactly like the agents say in the data, uh, we are um, keen on this traveler's privacy as we are a Dutch island and we are not uh, um, um, pressured by the GDPR, but we have to follow it. So it was very important for us to, to acknowledge this. And then in, spe in, in this project itself, um, it's not magic, like Adrian said, but it's be very agile in, in different ways. We had to move things around. I know this team, Sita and Indicia, were here on the island just uh, um, knocking on doors. So, so it was very, uh, uh, it was a, a different type of um, implementation of a project for sure. And I think we've, um, that is something that we learned on it, that, um, that following the, the standard doesn't, you know, you don't have to always follow the standard in order to accomplish it, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It was, um, let's just say resourceful was a really good word to describe our last two years together. So, Shar, I want to thank you. I want to thank the Implementers Working Group for allowing us to present today. I um, We have a couple minutes to take questions. Yuri might um, have to drop because he needs to go on to another meeting, but I think Adrian and I can also stay as well for a few minutes to field any questions. So, Shar, back to you. Great. Thank you so much, Heather, and thank you, Adrian, Yuri, and Heather for such a great presentation. Uh, we can open it up to questions if anybody has anything they'd like to ask. What are you using for machine readable governance technology? Um, hi, Kyle. Uh, we actually developed the machine readable governance that you see in the Cardia GitHub specifically from this project because um, in the very early days, Aruba needed to make decisions based on their regulations, their requirements, their compliance, and they did not want a third party to necessarily make those decisions on their behalf. And so that was the, the actual start of what you now know as machine readable governance. You can pick up that code and watch. Um, we have a, on the NDCO YouTube channel, there's a whole hour on it. 
in cardia.app. There are links to the governance that we used, but um, maybe Gary, before you go, you just want to talk a minute about why that was important, and then we'll go to Adrian. Um, yeah, I think I think that that's important because of uh, the business rules um, and and uh, what was really different from all the other pilots uh, uh, that we were um, yeah uh, running uh, was this switch that you are able to revoke that credential at any time and it would be uh, I, I, it sounds different but just that the user normally a dcc or a smart health card the user has a, a qr code and in this solution the the other side has the qr code so it's a, it was a, a, a nice switch but it works for the exact for the governance itself and um, applying a business rule ever changing three days 24 hours or, or whenever it had to be it it was on 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 time and 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 uh, correct all because you can revoke this uh, verified credential um, at any time and run the rules as they as needed. It was very important. Yes. Absolutely. I want to thank you, Yuri. I know that you yes, have, to, have move to on to your next call, but I'll have Adrian pick up on machine readable governance here. Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Yuri. So yeah, I would just add to uh, to to what has been said that. Um, it, the, the value we've seen in machine readable governance was the ability to provide a, a registry or directory of trusted issuers who is actually uh, in, uh, entitled to, uh, to issue the, this, um, this credential and also verify it. That's also very, very important um, because that has been a, a, in, in, the, in the air travel community, a very big problem. Um, how do we maintain this registry? Uh, who is able to to host it? Um, who is gonna is gonna have access to it? So um, that was uh, uh, very uh, fundamental. I'd say part of the solution is uh, be able to distribute this registry of trusted issuers and verifiers, and this guarantee also scalability, uh, which is very important because uh, that that can uh, re really reach uh, very high levels in terms of number of, uh, of, of issuing parties. So um, uh, I think that that was a, a key learning also uh, from that, uh, that piece. I was wondering, uh, what does the, this recent uh, EIC award mean for the project? So EIC means uh, European Identity Conference. Uh, so that's uh, the, the yearly conference that uh, this consulting firm uh, Kupinger Call uh, hosts every yeah, every year. So um, uh, they are very active in digital identity and, and, and cloud. So uh, we're very uh, very happy <laughs> to be part of this uh, yeah, this year. And and when when you first of all we didn't know we were winning that award till they called out Sita's name. <laughs> um, so what was, went through your mind, Adrian, as you were looking at the acceptance of that and what it means to the innovation that you've been working on going forward? So really, um, yeah, that was, for, so, so yeah, that was a surprise and a very good surprise. Um, and then immediately in the, in the hours that uh, after, after this, um, this opens a, a lot of lots of paths, really. Um, and the first one is about reusing uh, those travel credentials or those identity credentials, better said, into the travel continuum. Because we, we know that border crossing, when we, we travel, let's say, a long haul, or we go for a vacation or a business trip. So that's the, the first part, the first Piece, let's say the inspection piece uh, point uh, that that we, we we go through, but but then usually you have to rent a car, you have to check in at a hotel, you might need to check in at your um, your uh, an event uh, or convention center. Um, so what we are really now looking into is um, reduce uh, the uh, the trust that trust that the the, the arrival government created when they inspected. Um, that identity credential uh, to derive other credentials such as 
Um, yes, I, I'm, I've entered this country and I'm allowed to check in to uh, my room or I have a valid driver license uh, and, and I can forward this information to the car rental company. So that really international travel become absolutely seamless. Um, so uh, the fact that credentials are reusable brings a lot of value uh, into uh, into that, that process, which is today uh, extremely, extremely complex uh, by nature of, of all the stakeholders in, in, involved. Great, thank you. There, are, there, are there any other questions from anybody? All right, well, Heather and Adrian, thank you so much for this discussion. It was very interesting and congratulations again on the award. It must have been very exciting. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Team. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Great. So with that, we can return to uh, working group updates. Um, again, this is a, a switched call, so we're doing working group updates second. I will return to screen share. And we can go back to our announcements. Uh, next week, Indicio is hosting a meetup call on Did Indie. We had a presentation on this project uh, and on this call two weeks ago. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can register at the link provided. Um, additionally, it's, as has been mentioned, the European Identity Conference happened since our last meeting. and. Um, for, from Heather and Adrian, uh, we, we heard a bit about this conference from the perspective of accepting the award for the Cardia project, but would you two like to share any of your overall impressions or experience from the conference? Any common threads that came up? Sure, I can start, Adrian. Um, there was a dedicated track session around decentralized identity that was um, built in by EIC and Cooper Cole. So I think that was great. All of the sessions, we had a variety of people from the space presenting. All of them were highly attended with questions. Um, we had more, um, more traditional legacy identity providers specifically they're attending to learn about decentralized identity and that is why they attended the event. But I think yesterday, Kupinger Cole published a blog talking about they are seeing the convergence of these two types of identity technologies happening and that they're probably more mature than a lot of um, individuals in this in the larger identity space understand. So Adrian, what was your take on it? So yeah, what I what I really um, got from from the the conference is that um, also a lot of people had the, an interest and also quite a fascination for decentralized identity, and I think uh, what was uh, I think uh, valuable was uh, the fact that we could also provide some lesson learned and, and concrete return of experience I would say or, or feedback. On the case that were that we, we developed along with the government of, of Aruba, um, so um, we we had a lot of uh, yeah interesting uh, comments, discussion, and, and also the fact that yeah that vision uh, it's starting to be to be shaped, uh, it's starting to turn into a into a reality, uh, tangible reality. So I think that's uh, that's extremely uh, uh, pleasant to see, and and, um, and, and we hope that. Um, uh, now that we, we are making a step forward, uh, also organizations and group will, will jump into the, into, into the into the train, I would say, um, to, to promote uh, really the use of decentralized identity to, to solve those complex uh, problems of, uh, well, identity sharing between multiple organizations. Great, great. Thank you for, for sharing your impressions. It sounds like a, a great success of a conference. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing in, in general for the space that anybody's aware of? All right, if there are no more announcements, uh, we can move on to the working group updates. Um, for the main identity working group, we reported on their April meeting in our previous meetings. 
uh, let's see, indie contributors. In their last meeting, they went over progress on the indie areas shared components and they showed their load test results and also put out a call for resources on completing the, did, uh, the indie um, Ubuntu 20.04 upgrade. Um, if you're interested in getting involved and putting in time on this project, I'm sure that would be very much appreciated. And as we've said on previous calls, the did indie method meetings have been merged back into the regular indie contributors meeting, which have, have gone back to their regular time. All right, Aries working group meetings. Let's see. Anybody join this call who'd like to report? Uh, in their meeting yesterday, uh, they discussed fully qualified DIDs, device binding, push notifications, and a non-creds terminology. In the Aries bifold user group meeting, um, they've been working on peer-to-peer -peer connections um, and going over their framework documentation. Um, so there's links here if you'd like to learn more. Um, Aries Cloud Agent Python meeting, I usually attend this one, but I was out of the office, so I missed this one. Um, still, still getting ready to release um, 074. I believe it's release candidate two that is out currently. Um, so that is being tested. And then, um, so just figuring out those uh, PRs, which ones go in the release, um, and then persistent queues as well. Let's see. Aries Framework Go, they've mainly been going over work updates. Um, more links here if you'd like to investigate further into those PRs. Um, Aries Framework JavaScript, um, in their last meeting, they discussed the merging of issue credential v2 and out of band did exchange, um, and then EBSI support for AFJ. So lots of great work happening there. Uh, Hyperledger Ursa, uh, they, as far as I can tell, they haven't met in the past few months. Um, any Hyperledger working group updates that I'm missing that anybody's aware of? All right, we can move on to the Trust Over IP Foundation. Uh, let's see. We had the all members meeting yesterday. Uh, was anyone involved in that meeting who would like to share about it? Yeah, sure. The uh, uh, a big component of it is uh, one that you already went over the EIC and uh, uh, you know and, um, you know the it was deemed a, a, a success uh, uh, similar to what Heather was saying. Um, that uh, there's a lot of interest in um, decentralized identity and uh, its intersection with, uh, um, yes, especially federated. Um, yeah, and Trust Over IP was uh, uh, very happy with what it did. And, you know, initially they, there was a request for Trust Over IP to, um, uh, to speak with uh, the uh, GAIN, the global, oh gosh, what does this stand for? Identity Network. Um, and there was hesitation there, but ultimately um, there was trust over IP represent, uh, represented in the in the game discussion. But uh, yeah, that was, I think that was about it. Great, thank you. Yeah, it seems like a lot of our groups have been reporting on um, the European Identity Conference and um, discussing what happened there. So thank you for that update. All right, let's see, moving on to the, the Trust of IP working groups uh, in the communications committee. Um, as far as I can tell, they haven't met since we last met. So I think we've reported on them. Uh, the governance stack, they met last week and mainly discussed the status of the work of the, of the task forces. Um, and Scott Perry also talked about the Governance 101 webinar from conception through governance documentations. Um, the recording is there if you are interested to learn more. The technology stack, 
working group. They met uh, this week and again reported on task force updates, discussed the potential for a task force on AI and trust, and also discussed um, EIC. And their, their current focus is the GOIP technology architecture specification V1. All right, the utility foundry working group. Um, they're again working on the public utility directory and a document called um, a framework for evaluating layer one um, utilities. And it looks like they're beginning a new collaboration to focus on layer one governance task force that uh, will put together a template for layer one governance framework. Um, and then in the ecosystem foundry group, they had a presentation from Stephen Curran on a model of ecosystem governance under development. Um, concepts and terminology group, uh, they met last week and talked about this uh, terminology toolbox proposal, um, which I've linked if you'd like to learn more. So any other TUIP announcements or working groups that anybody would like to share? All right, next up is the Decentralized Identity Foundation um, in the DIFF DIDCOM working group. Um, they are mainly going over PR review, issue sorting, and planning. Um, here's a specific poll request that's linked if you'd like to learn more. Um, the DIDCOM users group, this unsync meeting, um, that is held over Discord. Um, in their meeting yesterday, they discussed a GitHub action problem on didcom.org, um, analyzing digital web node and didcom as a control channel is a potential metaphor. Let's see, the diff interoperability group. Um, they met several weeks ago and reported on IAW. Um, they've listed that their next meeting will not be until June 8th. The Wallet Security Working Group, uh, I don't believe they've met since we last met, unless anybody has um, other information. Um, let's see, are there other diff um, working group updates or status updates that anybody would like to share? All right, um, let's see. Moving on to the Sovereign Foundation. Um, is anybody involved in any of these meetings or um, I don't believe they've met um, since early February. All right, and then the W3C standard. Um, I am based on uh, their, their meeting notes and, and what they have online, I wasn't able to see that they um, met more recently than us. So are there any other working group status updates um, that anybody would like to share? I know we've kind of breezed through these today. So if anybody wants to jump in, you're welcome to. And I also see a question in the chat. Can I use didcom in the Aries toolbox? Um, yes, that is what we use for establishing or uh, sending messages, forming connections in the Aries toolbox and toolbox plugin. Um, more recently, um, well, out of band and did exchange has been implemented for forming those connections um, as an alternative to didcom, but so those are both options.
All right. I guess we've, we're potentially ending a bit early because we've had fewer uh, working group updates this week. But uh, does anybody have any other questions or updates or anything they'd like to share for the group? Um, I just want to share on your behalf, Shar, that you're going to be presenting next week at noon Eastern time with Daniel Bloom um, taking a deep dive on the DDD method. So if that's something that folks are interested in, um, you'll be doing that. So. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for mentioning that, Heather. And um, the link is is here on this um, wiki page, which I will send out again um, if you are interested in registering for that. So, thank you for mentioning that. And one last question in the chat here. Um, does the mediator work in the demo of the Aries toolbox? That is a great question. Um, there is a protocol for the mediator in the Aries toolbox. I know, I think there's been some work done on it recently to work out bugs. Um, I'm not sure the exact status of that. Um, so I know that it's a possibility. I'm not sure if it is working in this moment. So, but I can look into that and get back, back to you on that. Um, great. Well, thank you, Adrian, Heather, and Yuri um, for your presentation. Thank you all. Thank you to everybody who jumped in with working group updates and reporting on uh, the European Identity Conference. Um, thank you so much for joining today, and um, we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.